Hello once again, it's Matthew here from Matthew North Music and as you can see, we're in the shed today, which means I'm going to be making something. Now, as ever, if you find the kind of videos I'm making interesting or you like what I talk about, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help things grow. Also, follow me on Facebook, Matthew North Music, and on Instagram, Matthew North Music. And if you still use Twitter, it's Matt North Music. Anyway, today, what are we doing? Well, firstly, it's still October, so I may as well show you the Ian Beale calendar first. And here's the October Ian Beale calendar photo, and it looks like he's being strangled by Max Branning. And any of you that don't know or haven't seen the video shot out of here before, I'm always being watched over by Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee. And next to Paul and Debbie is a flip dot display, which was given to me by Sam, otherwise known as Look Mum No Computer. And that's a very good link to what I'm going to be building today. As it was my birthday back in September, and my mother decided to buy for my birthday, rather than, you know, underpants and socks or pyjamas, she bought me this. Now, what is this? Well, this is the printed circuit board and the front panel and jack socket panel for the latest kit from Look Mum No Computer, otherwise known as Sam. And this is basically a complete synthesizer on one board. So we've got the, the oscillator here, we've got a mixer here, We've got a filter here. We've got a envelope here. I've got two envelopes here. And then a lot of it can be patched in and out via these jacks. And the, the back of the jacks is this PCB here. But then the heart of it is all on this, this circuit board here. Now it runs, it's based on the Curtis CEM3442, I think the chip's called. Anyway, it's, it's the same chip that's in, all the Look Mon No Compute stuff, we've seen things like the Profit 5 and a zillion other synthesizers. And it actually has two oscillator chips. One is for the main sound and the other is for the LFO. And uh, yes, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to build this. At the moment then, we don't need the front panel because we're not going to be using that. And I'm going to do the jack panels when one of the last things I sold her. So we're only really interested in the main circuit board. However, the first thing we need to do is this, print off all of the component list <coughs> for the project, and then as you're soldering in the components, then you can tick off each one, one by one, and then you know what you've done and what you've got to come back to. Now, what I tend to do is I do whatever the value is first, and I usually do what there's most of. So there's, you can see here, there's a lot of 1K resistors here, there's a lot of 10K resistors here, and there's a lot of 100K resistors here. So I'll probably do those first. And as, as with anything that you solder, it's always best to do the smallest components first. So resistors, diodes, stuff like that. Then we move on to the slightly bigger components, which is going to be things like capacitors, um, regulators, anything like that that may be on the board. And then finally, it's things like um, the, the sockets for the chips. Um, anything else that's big. And then what we do is we don't solder in any of the knobs and switches and things. What we do is we put them in loose. We then bolt that to the front panel and make sure everything lines up. And then once it's lined up, because actually on the end here, you might be able to see, there's actually some tweakers here, little tweaker pots. So you have to make sure everything is completely lined up. And then once it is lined up like a sandwich, which will be, they'll be about sort of that far apart, then you can solder everything in. And that way, everything is in the correct position. So then you could, if you wanted to, take the front panel off. And then when you put the front panel back on, it'll all be lined up. And the way this sandwich kind of works is that we've got this panel here. And I think it goes... Uh, it goes that way. Yeah, it does. It goes that way. So this panel here goes that way, but then this panel with the jack sockets on here, because this is basically more proud of that, then we have <coughs> this panel here, and then there's a connector that joins the two together. In fact, it's that it's that way around, I think, to make it line up. Yeah. So this sort of sits proud like that. So it kind of looks like that, if you like. 
and then it'll all bolt together and hopefully it'll work and we can calibrate it and get it working. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start soldering in all the resistors and I'm going to start probably with the 1Ks, 10Ks and 100Ks. Get all those in first, then get the rest in. To aid me on this journey, I'm going to listen to these, which are two released tapes from the early 80s of the Beatles Star Club Hamburg recordings. And I've not listened to these in years, but I've just finished listening to Mark Lewison's tune-in book all these years, the, the complete history of the Beatles, which starts from basically when their parents were born up until the end of 1962. And it was a very long audio book. It was 45 hours, but every second was brilliant and I cannot recommend it enough. Anyway, I should catch you after I've listened to some John, Paul, George and Ringo, even if it does have uh, Pete Best on the cover. These were recorded in December 1962, so Ringo on drums. First batch of resistors are in then, the 10Ks, the 1Ks and the 100Ks. Because the rest of the resistors are different values, I'm just going to put them in as and when I spot them and then just populate the rest of the resistors. Well, as ever with these things, it, it sometimes takes longer than you think, but all the resistors are in there now, and there was a lot of them. Um, well, some of my soldering is a little bit iffy there, but hey, it'll still work. So the next thing is going to be other smaller components. Uh, we're going to put capacitors in, diodes, a couple of ferrites, or you can just use a piece of wire. And then I'm going to pop all the capacitors in. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, do a bit more soldering. If we look at the clock, it's 20 past five, which means I've been doing this for about three and a half hours. And uh, if we look at the circuit board, we can see I've got all the discrete components in. So all the diodes, all the resistors, the transistors, they're all in place. So the next thing I'm going to solder in are the IC sockets and the power connector. And then we can think about um, mounting all the uh, knobs, pots, switches and LEDs. So it's actually uh, not doing too bad at the moment. Everything now is finished on this side of the board. All the components are in. Now this socket here is actually bigger than it should be. Um, it's a 16 pin socket and I didn't have enough 14 pin sockets. So what I've done is I snipped off the legs here and here from the other side and I've used this socket so the actual chip will fit in and ignore the last two pins. I mean, I could have waited and ordered some new ones, but then I thought, well, I had plenty of the others and I'm not planning on building much else at the moment, so that'll do. So the next thing I've got to do is, is put some pins on here that will go to attach the daughter board for the jacks and then put all the pots and various other parts onto the flip side of the board and sandwich it together now this is going to be quite this is going to be quite an awkward job to do but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes now what an idiot if i'd actually opened up my bag of my last thong cordor then i would have seen i actually had 14 pin sockets that i had actually ordered along with other things i needed there's some tlo 74s here there's some one meg uh pots that are like uh, the standard pots that we use here these are the 100k ones, I need a mixture of both. Then there's various switches, these are double pole single throws, Here, uh, sorry, single pole double throws. And this is one that's um, momentary, so it just flicks in one position and then goes back. So all these bits need to go on the board. I've also got some uh, trimmer pots here that will need to go on, these are for tuning the two oscillators. So uh, let's get all that now into place. Right, little tip here, um, to try and get this all lined up, what I ended up doing is this pot here I put a nut on and then I soldered that one in place here. So it, it sort of sandwiched it all together and then I could generally wiggle each little fitting, like for example where the trimmer pots are here, and get them in place. And then I'll just put um, a couple more pots soldered in, like the end ones, and then I'll put nuts on them to hold them tight, and then I can solder everything else in. Um, as you can see, I haven't put the LEDs in yet. I'll do those afterwards. And I actually forgot to put in one of the uh, one of the switches, which is the one here. But I'll put everything. I'll solder everything else in. Then I'll pop in the LEDs, 
and then I will put that switch in as well and hopefully all this section then should all be kind of finished. Okay, well, I've kind of got this together now. Everything's wired in. I think I may have made a schoolboy error and I may have wired all the LEDs in the wrong way around because nothing seems to be lighting up. Um, but that's, that's just going to be really easy to swap those over. But I've got this just plugged into a little amp and here we've got our, one of our oscillators. And I think we've got our noise circuit here. Sort of here. Um, but that's our oscillator anyway. And this is our LFO. We've got a filter. It's got resonance as well. So, yeah, in essence, it's all now working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the LEDs and I'm going to put the rest of the jack sockets in. Then we can calibrate it and then we can listen to this and see what we can get out of this uh, really rather cool piece of kit. Right, it is actually the next day, as you can tell, because it's daylight. And I've just got this hooked up to my BeatStep Pro. Now, what we need to do first is to calibrate. Now, by calibration, what you basically want is you want your all your notes to be in tune, relevant to each other. And the, the funny thing is with this, uh, as you can hear, that's actually sounding in tune. And if we jump up an octave, I mean, that lowest, that lowest note is a little bit out, but not by much. And that's just by luck. It was roughly about the same. All I had to do is this, um, thing called track here which is basically sets the voltage um, so that you get basically one volt between there and there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the other oscillator. So I'm going to plug that into oscillator 2 and we stick our one volt per octave into VCO2 and, and we're not hearing it very loudly at the moment. Let me turn it. And that's actually sounding pretty good as well. I don't know. I don't know if this circuit's different or something, or is that? There's nothing to do with the other octave, but it's just coming out very quietly out of oscillator two. I'm not quite sure. If I stick this into the master output and just turn it up here, uh, have we got any sound coming out? Oh, I know what it could be. It could be because I haven't got it going into the trigger. Anyway. That should be a low C, so if I turn this down to a C. So yeah, I think it's roughly in tune now. So. Uh, if we now hook this to our output here, we should get the output of the of the synth. And again, we've not got anything happening, so I'm going to plug straight into the into the main input. And let's see if we can get some sound. We're seeing lights coming on. We need to fade it up here a bit. There we go. Right, so we're not getting any um, any pitch adjustment on on here. And what that is, I'm just going to put a little sequence in. Maybe. 
Maybe it doesn't like the lower notes. Um, So it's now working anyway. So yeah, it's all basically working. And uh, as with all these things now, it's just a case of figuring out what it does and what sounds to get out of it. So I'm just gonna have a little play and uh, see what we can come up with. Well, I made a bit of loop on the BeatStep Pro and I recorded the loop into Cakewalk. Um, because then that way it stays there and uh, it sounds like this and I've got the two oscillators going so it sounds like a sort of dualist oscillator type synth so it's something very simple so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record that into the computer as audio and I'm then going to just build it up and see what we can come up with now you see, I'm getting to grips with this now, and the I've got just got one note playing. But then if I instead of using the other oscillator, which you can sort of hear, we turn that down, and instead we use the other oscillator to modulate the main. We get this. So we got a real proper Doctor Who sound effect. Add some noise into it. Yeah, it's pretty funky. As time goes on, you get more used to how this thing works and you can get some really cool, like, you know, special effects and things, you know, and especially when you like modulating one oscillator from the other, so you can do this sort of thing. So, you know, get that real sort of Doctor Who feel. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you the very, very basic, silly, simple tune that I've done, purely recorded on this, added a couple of bits of delay and reverb and that's it. But uh, yeah, have a listen, see what you think. Thank <laughs> you. 